What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat and we are here with another episode of Mountain Blade Warband. They have sound the horn of Nording, which means we're probably about to go to war with somebody. Who am I reporting to? Gurlad. Let's go find Gurlad. We got the summons to go to war just a minute ago and my guess is that we're probably gonna hit Tyr and try and get back the ancestral lands of our people. We have 985 versus 483. You will know that my army right now is not my A team. This is definitely like the B team, the C team, the D team. All of my A team guys are up in my castle. After we get done reporting in, I'm actually going to disengage this war and not really take part in it. We're going to continue trying to get soldiers wrangled in for Sargoth. And then from there, since we're not going to be hanging around with Nords too much, I need to start making a plan as to whose side. Basically, I'm going to stab somebody in the back down here and take their stuff. And after I do that, Tolbuck, the Tolbuck was my favorite mountain, World of Warcraft, 100% my Tolbuck. Even years and years and years later, I was always riding the Tolbuck. It's either that or the motorcycle, because the motorcycle was pretty bomb too. Let's do this battle, because why not? It's such a huge battle that I really feel like we should probably be part of it. If we don't show up, I think somebody will, he may notice. This is kind of like our Battle of Sterling or something. Where if you're not there, somebody's probably going to be like, so where's Mandog at? Like, I don't know, did she have like an appointment with a doctor or something? Yeah, I think she had kidney stones or something. They're having like this long drawn out conversation. I'm off hiding in the bushes just like... <laughs> Nobody can find me. Nobody can find my female self. The way I envision myself as a female. Riding around, hitting men in the face with blades. Ah yes, the lovely old days of the medieval times. I'm gonna keep my troops back because I don't really want them engaged in the fight. I, I'm i trying not to lose soldiers right now. If I can avoid getting anybody killed, I'll bring my cavalry along with me just so they can act as a little bit of a vanguard in case I get bogged down, like somebody to come chisel me out rock hammer style. Just in case I end up getting fossilized in the middle of their lines, they'll just come along and tink, 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 get me on. Oh no, just like that actually. And that is why we bring cavalry with us. Because anybody from the Kurgeets does not know how to drive. Kurgeet drivers, absolutely 100%. The second you get them on a horse, they just start running into everybody. And nobody really knows why. It's just like one of those weird things. It's probably just because they're on horses more, so they're more likely to make a mistake. That's what I bet it is. New enemies have already arrived. Well, that's okay. I think we made pretty quick work of the first batch. And much like when you run out of cookies at a fancy party, it's time to refill that tray and get some more fancy cookies. And so, fancy cookies? Where are you? I'm gonna cut you. That's right, this just got real. You thought I was just gonna eat you. Nope! You're getting gutted, fancy cookies. Oh, it's a dude on a horse. Maybe I, sh maybe I should hit this guy because he's not on my side. I can't even identify who's on my side anymore. It's just like a big blur of combat and destruction. A couple of noobs down here. I'm gonna go ahead and take them out real quick. They wandered onto the wrong battlefield. This guy is just dead set on clipping me with that bastard sword. I'm wondering if that's one of the lords, because he is really just on me. He's on me like ice on pavement. It's just like, what? That saying didn't even make sense if you're from a place that's warm, so take that. <laughs> if you're from a place that's cold, it pretty much works as applied. Bear that in mind. It's a very limited use kind of saying. Oh god! 250 damage? Are you serious? What's the point in having armor? We lose five morale because the universe is cruel and unkind. No, we're going back into battle. Don't don't get me wrong here. We're getting back up in here. Unfortunately, we get to do the whole boring let's ride in circles thing again for another 25 minutes. What they should do is just give you control of all the units. That would really kind of expedite this process. Watching the AI ride in circles eyeballing the enemy. Incredibly boring. Insanely boring. See, at least the enemy had the, uh, the Kajonis to charge us. God, I don't even know where the enemy, like, begins and ends right now. Take him out just because he was a free hit. They have a lot more knights in this batch. But that's not going to stop me from sabering them across the head. And those are crossbow bolts. Ooh! That guy wanted it. What? 
These magic bullets, I swear to god. The magic bullets in this game, like nobody could have made that shot. It was humanly impossible. And yet somehow somebody magically made it. Let's see. Where's the guy that I need? Kumipa? No, not you. Gurlad. There we go. Just to say that I reported in. I'm pretty sure this quest is going to be over really, really rapidly anyways, because the AI seems to get more and more screwy the longer the game goes along. It just seems to lose all sense of the plot and what it's supposed to be doing the older the map is. God, so many textual messages. I don't need textual messages right now. This right here, Bannerlord, you should be able to turn all of these off. I don't care that some guy down in the Serenade Sultanate did something that was completely and totally irrelevant to everything in life. It's just, it's pointless. I don't care. If it doesn't have to do with my kingdom, eh. Don't display it. Oh, we're hitting Vercheg. Well, I'm sort of terrified about Sargoth right now because I have like five guys down there. I'm not doing any tasks. I just want you to know that. I'm not doing any tasks at all. Fine. I will come over and I will see what you need. He wants me to do Alberk, Ruvar, and Hayek. Sure. Why not? There's Ruvar. It's weird that, like, no matter how famous you are in the faction, they still send you to just do, like, bitch work all day, every day. It's like, you know that menial job we sent you to do when you were, like, 12 years old and nobody cared about you? Guess what you get to do? Really? 7,000 experience? For what? Gurlad bailed. He started the battle and then just got the hell out of there. That's cool. I don't really want to fight for Vercheg anyways. This may be a really nice opportunity to score ourselves some super sweet loot. What I'm thinking... Is the king over here? What I am thinking is that... King Ragnar is. So what I'm gonna do... Let's make our own faction. This is it. We're gonna do it. It's time. And you're going to have to bear with me because this is going to be a learning experience for me. I've made my own faction like maybe twice. I usually just ride around with one of these factions until they conquer the whole map. And so this is not where my area of expertise is. So there's your obligatory disclaimer right there. So that when people are like, oh my god, you're such a noob. You'll know exactly why. I already tried to warn you. I already tried to tell you. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to unload everybody into this garrison. Because we're going to lose everybody in this garrison when we give the land back. And so I want to take the utmost greatest troops I can find out of this entire selection. I'm going to bring them all with me. So that the second we do something a little bit shady here. I mean, this is going to be a little bit iffy. You're going to have to stick with me. I guess I'll turn them all into footmen, even though I guess we can assume that they're probably not going to come along. You know what? There's an easier way to do this. There we go. Let's just do that. And we can't obviously garrison any of our named people. I'm going to break off so to let you into my mind's eye of what I'm planning right now. We're going to go back up there. We're going to tell King Ragnar that we no longer want to work with him. And then what we're going to do is we are going to sack Vercheg as fast as we can right after it comes back up. Now that may require us to be a little bit unpopular and to do something kind of foolish. But I think it will work out for us. So let's have a look through this list right here. 100% we want the 21 Huskarls. If we don't bring them, that's kind of a giant waste of my time. Vagir Marksman, we totally want you too. We also want the Rodok Sharpshooters. The Swadian Knights will be coming along. Hired Blades definitely coming along. We have a couple of veteran crossbowmen that I am tempted to bring along, even though... Well, what else do I have here? How many veterans do I have? Because those guys are really, really close to upgrading. And we have 13 Swadian Knights, so let's bring those eight. The veteran crossbowmen, because those guys will level up really, really soon into sharpshooters. We'll bring ourselves... I guess we'll fill out the rest of our group with veterans. And that's going to be about the most badass group we could have possibly assembled. I see a sword sister in there that we're leaving behind. That's a terrible decision to leave a sword sister. Let's You can't leave a sister behind. She's one of us. And so we're going to grab that. The two mercenary cavalry instead of two of them. 
That's a pretty badass group right there. That's a group that if I saw it on the map, I'd be like, yeah, we're in for an ass whooping. This is really, really, really gonna hurt. And it's about the best we can do with what we have. I don't see any other options, so let me count my archers all together. We have 33 archers all together. I want to make sure they spawn in with me. I want to make sure they spawn in with me. And I want to make sure they spawn in with me for the first round of whatever combat we go into. It's a pretty rudimentary group, though, all things considered. If you look at the group assemblage, there's nothing inherently complicated about it. And so now we go, and we say that we want to be released from our oath. And so wherever Ragnar is at, did we conquer that already? Good. There's King Ragnar. Oh yeah, I forgot that we made friends with him. So we're going to ask to be released from our oath. There it is, and so we're down to one. And we're actually not grumpy with them, which is good. That's really, really good. Our faction relationships, it's going to take us a bit of work to get ourselves up to warlike. And I believe that's best done. Kneecapping them is kind of an interesting idea. I think they have to have negative... Oh, they put 110 in there. And that 110 is going to be mostly trained footmen. That's not bad. Let's go hit Otisan. What we'll do is we'll raid it. And that should lower our reputation. So we'll start there. And that only grumped them out with me, so we'll steal some cattle then. If that doesn't work, we'll just go beat up a lord somewhere. Although this is going to repopulate really, really rapidly. So just be aware that we are on the clock right now for making this work. I feel as though this plan has really, really kind of fallen apart on me. We could take Telrog, but that puts us right in the middle of territory that I don't feel like fighting over. It appears as though they've got it in their heads to take Sargoth. But that doesn't matter. It's not mine anymore anyways. We need to find some of these lords. Where the hell did these guys run off to? There's one. Let's go beat up my friends with Dirajun. Hold on. I want to mess up my friendships here. you got to maintain your friendships. If you have no friends left... Let's see. Dirajun likes us, so we don't want to do that. We want to find somebody expendable. Like Turaya or someone. It's very, very disappointing. Where did all these guys go? Where? They took back Provin. Maybe they went down this way. I don't know. These guys have all vanished now, and I'm becoming frustrated because I had, like, this tight-knit plan, and now they've totally just pooped on it, all over it. Of course, they're all at a festival here. Funsies. Let's grab some food to hold us over for a while. Let's go beat up Fudrime. I don't even know that guy. That is always a pretty good excuse to beat somebody up, right? That only put us down to a minus three. It's going to take us a lot of mayhem making in order to make this work. Because the game physically will not allow you to siege a building until you're at war with them technically through your own relation. This also increases the chance that they could just ride out on us super hard after we take their land. It's a little bit dependent. It's a kind of a weird spot to be in, so I'm not really too sure where this is all going to plan out or how this is all going to occur once we get here. Oh, he does actually have real soldiers. I mean, it may be in my better interest to go somewhere like the Kurgeats. I don't know. If we don't accomplish anything by the end of this episode, and we haven't decided like where the first castle is we're going to take, I'll leave it open to discussion, because this is kind of a backline series now anyways. I mean, I think there's probably... 
only 20 or so episodes left in this thing, just based on my attention span anyways. I'd like to conquer the whole map, but it may be a bit more work. It depends. If it turns out to be really easy to command my guys and just be like, you go here, you go here, and we just wipe things out systematically, we'll probably be okay. We'll keep the pressure. We'll do what the AI doesn't do, and we'll keep pressure on certain factions. Okay, and so I don't want any of that. I'm going to find another lord down in here, Kumipa. I don't even think that guy... Yeah, let's beat up Kumipa. Or are we already at war now? I think we may already be at war. Let's go see if we can siege one of their castles. What does he have? Like, absolutely nothing. 18 Huskarls. Let's see if we can siege this thing. Or maybe there's a better target. Let's ride around. Let's do a little run around the block and see what useful areas are around that we could possibly usurp. Radigir might be a cool position to be in, especially since there's only 89 guys here. I don't think I'm friends with Jarl Merigir anyways. Let me look and see. We got Lords by Relation. Yeah, whatever. He's already grumpy with me, so this isn't even going to be like a big deal. This isn't going to be a surprise to him. He's just going to be like, oh, damn that Mad Dog McGriddle. So there's 89 there that we could conceivably take. 325 at Kura. Not going to be a priority target. I don't think we're pretty... We're not on our A game for that one. We are definitely below the pro level that we would need to be at to make that work. We could also take a look at some of these castles over here that the Kurgeats have. Because I have a sneaking suspicion that if I go to war with the Nords, I'm going to have really, really bad morale. Based on the fact... What's Ikimur doing? That all of my units are from the same faction that I'll be fighting against. So it's kind of like a civil war. Caused me some major problems. Some little headaches here and there. Let's pick up some supplies from Ikimur. Nothing too delicious looking. See if they got any good armor too, because I haven't upgraded the armor on any of my units in a long time. And I've got loads and loads of money to just throw away. We could get a badass reinforced coat of plates, but it's so expensive for such a small gain. You know, four armor to the head, or four armor to the body and the legs. That's all you're getting out. The core bully is a little expensive too. I'll take that one though. That one's a really good price. Cool. And we'll throw that on somebody. Who's got terrible armor? Nizar. There you go. You're one of my frontline guys. I'll give it to you for now. And so now Nizar is equipped up for the future. I should probably also start doing that with everybody else. Because I don't think I'll be able to re-equip them once they become lords. They don't have any castles other than Tolbuck and... So it might be a good idea to do Sungechi. That might be our place. Let's do that, because I don't want to... I'm worried about risking losing a lot of my troops based on morale if we go to war with the wrong people. Let's go to Dash Biga. We'll beat up Voldrat. Just to get ourselves nice and negative. And so after this fight, we're going to go up and we're going to take out that castle there. Declaring our own faction. I have no idea. I think if it's just if you take a castle... I think the last time I did it, that's how it worked. It was just if you take a castle while you're all by your lonesome and you have nobody else, it will start the red faction for you so that you can get going blowing up post offices or whatever it is that the red faction does. I liked those games, and it's disappointing that they've fallen so far from where they started. I really liked Red Faction Guerrilla. Which was an extremely badass free roaming game with really, really destructible environments. I found that game to be a complete and total pleasure to play. Ooh, they have a lot of elite units. Something tells me they haven't fought with anybody in a while. Therefore, it shall be my job to murder everyone. Every single one. You, sir? Murdered. You, sir? Murdered. Maybe not you, because you've got an axe. Maybe not you. You're too well defended. How dare you block my murder, sir? This is a sanctioned murder by me. I sanctioned it. I mean, there's no real higher court that you have to go to to murder somebody in this game. You kind of just do your thing. Well, I have had unexpected losses from this. Really unexpected losses. 
Probably should have set up some lines or something. I didn't realize he was running around with elite units all over the place. We also have to worry about the king coming down on us like a ton of bricks if we take that castle. But I think what I'm going to do is I'll try and split up my troops. I think the troops don't actually have to recruit. So if I turn my lords into my own five holders, I don't think they have to go recruit. I think they just generate troops from time to time of whatever race that they are. So if they're Nordic, so if Metheld is my first lord, then she's going to generate Nord troops. Okay, and so we beat them up. Sure, Steps Bandits, jump in. Why not? And I'll also capture some of your guards and your infantry and your marksmen. You never know when you're going to have to wheel and deal to survive. Let's head back up to Tolbuk. No, not Tolbuk. We're heading up to Sengechi. And this is the beginning. This is a very crimson beginning to a long game, you guys. I'm pretty excited about starting this phase of the game. Just in case, I haven't saved in a little while, so just in case there's a crash or anything, let me do that. Make some Huskarls. The nice thing about fighting that elite army is that it did level up a ton of my troops into their higher tier counterparts. Alright, let's go. Let's siege this thing. Ooh, we have to do the siege tower? Yuck. I guess we'll do it. I don't really have a choice in this case. This seems to be probably the best all-around target because the Kurgites have really been hurting lately. I don't think they're going to be in any position to fight back. Yeah, there they are right there. So that's what you want to do. You want them to ping pong around. Oh, nope. Did they come along with the king? Who's here? 53 guys. Are they stacked up as hard as I think they're stacked up? So they're still going to run away. They're just getting a little bit closer. They're playing chicken. That guy's just going to ride past all together. He's like, oh, I wasn't coming after you. I was just kind of, I had to go through the pass, man. That might be what they're all doing. They may be trying to sneak through the pass to go do something else. It may not even be me that they're interested in. Although he is turning around, so who knows. Very confused people. Come on, let's capture this thing. Another 13 hours. You know, I've never starved out a castle in this game. I don't even know if it's possible before somebody reinforces it. Like, you got to be really dedicated to the cause. You've got to have your boots in the grass. Just, I am not doing anything else. I'm starving you out to make that work. I don't think I've seen the AI do it either. Eventually, they commit to the assault. All right. Let's go ahead and get our first castle here for the Red Faction. I'm going to have my archers hold this position. And what I need to do is have everyone else follow me down to the siege tower. If I'm super lucky, my sharpshooters will do a reasonably decent job of killing everybody on the walls. And then we'll be able to take this thing without too big of a fanfare. I didn't see anything that looked uber elite in there. I think they had about 20 units out of 70 that were elite. But I've got like 90 units out of 100 that are elite. So I don't see any way that we're not going to complete this siege in due time. Everything should go okay. There's the first death. And it was a lancer too, which is really nice. That's somebody with a large halberd that could potentially be a major stepping stone for us. Or at least break some shields. That's the other thing that I would hope, is if they're going to sit here firing arrows for the first five minutes of the fight, that when we get up there, there will be at least 50% less shields in the front line, and then we can just handle our business as we see fit. It's a small fight. The big fights are the ones that tend to take a lot longer, where you've got like 200 people versus 200 people. Because then you've got reinforcement phases, and you've just got attrition. With smaller battles for castles like these, I don't think we have anything really to worry about. I'm going to put a couple arrows up there too, because I've got time to do so. So far, no deaths of my own, only deaths of the enemy. Giving you guys the short play-by-play -play right here. Our guys on the hill will run out of arrows, probably not for another minute and a half or so. They've got a bit of time left. Come on, drop that shield. Look how many arrows are in that thing. Make that shield fall. And then what I want to do is relocate my archers a tad. So I'm going to relocate them to right here once that gate goes down. Infantry, get on in there. Let's do this thing. This castle is ours. You want to be a lord? Borcha, you want to be a lord? Get up that wall. Mathel, you want to be a lordess? Get up there. Mad Dog McGriddle, you want to be empress? Get on up here. It is time to unify the entire map under a single glorious red banner. And those who stand against us will be food for the carrion. 
not food for like the carry-on like when you get on a plane I mean if you've got food in your carry-on that seems a little bit risky like it might stink or something and give you away And so the fight is joined. We're obviously going to take a little bit of damage right here. That initial bit of red scared me slightly, but we should be okay once we break the initial charge. They are surrounding us now, though, from that side, which is always a bad thing. We're fighting on two fronts. Fire into their lines from here. Eh, almost got him. The din and the throng are quite loud at this moment. In fact, I fear I may have left my volume up too loud. Luckily, my volume is not related to, like, the game volume, so you guys don't have to worry about that. But in my ear holes, it is incredibly loud right now. Now what we want to do is take our archers, and we want to position them right here, just in case this fight goes longer than we want it to. Is he through the wall? Go ahead and put a sword through him. And who remains? That guy is coated in blood. That guy has gotten busy in this episode. He's been doing all kinds of the slashing and stabbing. That or it's his blood. I mean, I like to think it's the blood of his enemies, but if it's his blood, then we definitely need to get him to the medical tent if we even had one. Oh well. Oh, hello. That was your one there, pal. That was your one. And so now we've got our first shiny castle. Congra Definitely congratulations are in order, guys. Thanks for sticking with me thus far. Now from the prisoners, we rescued a lot of people, which means that there's not a whole lot to lose right here. We can reassemble our forces pretty quickly. We've got caravan masters, caravan guards. Let's take the Nord warriors. The trained footmen. Let's look through the full list first. So we've got Rodox sergeants. We'll take them. Veteran crossbowmen. We'll definitely have them along. All of the prisoners are coming with us. And so, what do I want out of this list? I guess I'll take the majority of the crossbowmen. And everything else is sort of, like, not that great. Something that I don't really care about. Take the veteran spearmen. This is the highest list thing on the game. I'm sorry, they're the highest thing on the list. And from that point forward, I've got four spaces left. We'll take the veteran. Take a couple footmen. And then we'll take the veteran archer, I guess. And that'll be that. A heavy steps charger. That's a really good horse from what I remember. 40, 50 maneuver. What's its charge? 32. Its speed is... Oh, its armor is actually lower. I'll give that to one of my compatriots then. We have an elite cavalry shield with a resistance of 26 and a size of 79. That's a lot smaller. I could get shot in the legs conceivably. We'll try it out though. It'd be nice for siege battles or something where I need a lot more HP. My lady, we have taken Sungechi. Who do you wish to give it to? We give it to ourself, as you wish. And so we are queen of the land. You will be the new lady of Sungech Castle. And so we possess land in our name without being tied to any kingdom. This makes you a monarch in your own right with your court temporarily located in Sungech Castle. However, the other kings in Calradia will at first consider you a threat, for if any upstart warlord can grab a throne, then their own legitimacy becomes called into question. You may find it desirable at this time to pledge yourself to an existing kingdom. If you want to continue as a sovereign monarch, then your first priority should be to establish independent right to rule. You can establish your right to rule through several means. Yeah, we've done that already. At any rate, your first step will be to appoint a chief minister from among your companions to handle your affairs of state. Different companions have different capabilities. You may appoint new ministers from time to time. You may also change the location of your court by speaking to the minister. 
I'm going to appoint a prominent citizen. And so what will be the name of your kingdom? We'll call it the Nerd Kingdom. Indeed. Everyone share a manly nod with me. Even you ladies, manly nod. Here we go, manly nod away. Alright, we have nodded towards the Nerd Kingdom. And it is on. Like Tron and Donkey Kong. They opened the gates for their queen. That actually sounds pretty... There it is right... Th oh yeah! We should probably give Bulaban to somebody. Let's go ahead and talk to Mathel and see what her leadership skills are looking like. So she's got a leadership of four. Not too terrible. She should be able to field a decent sized army. I think I'll make her my first... Oh, never mind. I want you to be... I want to ask you something. Would you be interested in holding a fife? Bulaban! And so you'd make me a thane? Well, I suppose that I could postpone reclaiming my inheritance for a little while longer and make my great hall at Bulaban. Someday I may travel over the seas to take back what is mine. Okay, and so we've lost Mathel. Now, this is kind of a mixed bag, and you'll forgive me. The episode's running a little bit longer, but she's no longer part of our army. She's gone. What's going to happen is that she will spawn now from Bulaban in just a little bit. And from Bulaban, she will now hold court and be one of our vassals. Much like King Ragnar has Jarl Mera year or anything else like that. I think I get to decide what my title is, too, somewhere. And I don't know where I select that. Maybe I go here. Let's go to the Lord's Hall. We'll have a little chat. Oh, good. They've set out the velvet and the gold for me. I wish for you to retire. I wish to have a place. Okay, so that's all right now. He doesn't really have anything for me. Like I said, a little bit of a learning process for me. There's also supposed to be coffers or something. Yeah. And so we've got a storage chest over here, which is something that we've never had before. I may give somebody that horse. That horse is pretty badass. That's a really nice horse that could be bequeathed to somebody that deserves it in proper fashion. Like maybe Rolf. Sir, your equipment. Oh, he can't use it. Well, never mind then. We can give him a step stroke. Have I not leveled his... What? I thought I was working on his writing skill. Oh, he's at two. Okay, so I was working on it, but it wasn't quite there. And so we want to make sure that we keep people close to us that haven't leveled up their leadership skills. Which means for the time being, we may only have one lord under our control. The other thing that I want to do right now is unload all of my troops into the garrison to guard the castle. And beyond that point... We could probably expect reprisals, because this is a very, very important pass for the Kyrgyz. The other thing we may think about doing is taking Tolbuk very shortly. I don't want to piss off too many people prematurely. I want to kind of keep our enemies where they're at. They don't have enough... Yeah, they've only got two main capitals left, it looks like. So I think we'll probably be able to hold Bulaban for now. But we want to keep our ear to the ground with regards to the general politicking that will be happening from here on out. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for the first episode in which we will be running our own kingdom. I think what I would like to do now, after this episode, is we got to take stock of what we have and really be smart about the way we play this out. Because I'm going to be really embarrassed if I make my own kingdom and then I lose right after. So anyways, I'm going to think about my plan of action from here into the next episode. Take care out there, everybody, and hi-do to all of you.